We are talking about Messiah tabernacling with us, coming for his second time that he's going to be coming, and the missed Messiah, how he was missed the first time he came. We're going to go into the Old Testament. I want to start into Genesis 49, that the scepter is not leaving the land of Judah, that the staff will stay between his feet until the time that the heavens come. We're going to go over Genesis 49. Let's just jump right in. Go to 10 and it says, The scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor the ruler's staff from between his feet. In 11 it says, that he is binding his donkey's colt to the chosen vine. And if you continue to read on, it talks about how his garments are washed in the in the vine's juice, in the, in the grape juice, that it is cleaned. It is talking of our Messiah. So I want to start a good foundation with Isaiah. Let's go to Isaiah 42. It says, Behold my servant whom I uphold, my elect one in whom my soul delights. I have put my spirit upon him. He will bring forth justice to the Gentiles. He will not cry out nor raise his voice nor cause his voice to be heard in the street. A bruised reed he will not break. A smoking flax he will not quench. He will bring forth justice for truth. He will not fail nor be discouraged till he established justice in the earth and the coastland shall wait for his law. And I want to talk about the caution of the broken reed leadership. What God is saying in this time is that there is a reed and this reed is a staff and it's being used. And if you go down in to 29, it says that they have used this staff of reed. And when their people have placed their hands upon it, some uh, versions will say that their, ha their hands had been splintered or it says it will break through their hands. And when they thought that they could put their weight upon this staff, that their hand would fall through with splinter and they would hurt their shoulder, that they would, it would open up and it would rip their shoulders. And it says that it would shock the people. In some translations, it says that it will make it their lions crazy and shaking that they are going to be um, uh, shocked by this. They're going to thought that the leader that they had um, was a good foundation. And when they wrench their backs, like it says, if you go on, it says, when this staff of you broke, you wrenched your people's backs and you left them shaking. So we are seeing that God is talking and this was not just for in the time of Egypt. This is for the time of now where we have to put all of our weight onto the staff of God and know that the foundation that we are on is of Jesus Christ. Because as we put our weight upon things that are not of God, as we put our weight onto man and the staff of man, we will wrench our backs. We will tear our shoulders. We will splint our hands. So God is the God who is the reed of our lives. He is the reed that will not bend. He is the reed who, that is the staff of stone. You see, the Israelites needed to find protection. So they were leaning on Pharaoh. They were going towards towards Egypt in this political time uh, rather than Nebuchadnezzar. So we are seeing that there was a political struggle and they went to the party that they thought would be holding them upright and holding them sturdy. And they ended up wrenching and breaking and tearing themselves, being stuck into the scales of their leader and been eating, been eaten by the beasts of the field and the birds of the air. So we see um, in Zephaniah 3, where we just were studying, um, it talks about the open work of the cedar, how God is going to be removing foundations so you can see the cedar work of what has been built. We went through a study on broken reed leadership, and it talks about a bruised reed. Our king, our savior, he is a gentleman. He will not come in forcefully. His reed, his staff will withstand, will withhold, binding his donkey to the vine and his donkey's colt to the choice vine. 
This is the words for our Messiah coming in. He is going to come in, Zechariah 9.9, on a donkey, a donkey colt's full. He is to come in, on that, that baby donkey. He's going to come in on a young donkey set aside just for him to fill prophecy. He went and fulfilled the prophecy when he got the donkey that was tied up waiting for him, for him to come in at the selection day of the lamb when the other lamb would be coming into the temple to fulfill for the Passover. You see, the ordinances of the Lord have been fulfilled. He has fulfilled the spring festivals already. Now we're in the time of tabernacles and we are setting a place, setting a table for the Lord to come to our own homes. And he has showed up. He has shown up each night that we've gone out we've had something happen each night we've gone out something special has taken place it's little but it's special and it's growing and as we stand and do these things that the lord has called us to do for his second coming to get ready to put into practice these things that are my statue says the lord these are my things that i have set before you for appointed times for you to understand that i am the lord he has set forth these times for you to meet with him and is not about being jew or gentile but is about being open and available and as soon as we understand and realize that it is not about Jew or Gentile, but it is about coming together as the child of God and being available, then you will notice that the things will change in your life, that the evil things will have to move out of your camp. Evil things cannot stay in your camp. They must move because the glory of the Lord is in the camp. When the light of the Lord shines in your camp, all evil must flee. All of these things that are not of God must flee. They cannot hold residence in your camp. So we have this time of tabernacles, this appointed time where the Lord says, in the last days, men will have to go into this time of tabernacle. You will be forced in a way now he is still a gentleman so he's saying that look if you guys don't come into these last days of times of sukkot these times of festival that i put forth because these are my appointed times that you will have no rain in your land in your nation you will have no rain if they do not come up to israel if they do not come up to jerusalem to partake in these feast of the Lord and this feast of tabernacles and the last days and the millennium of Jesus when he is here for his second time, his second coming, that you will have no rain for your nation, that it, you will have to do so, quote, whether you are Jew or whether you are Gentile. So we got to get out of this mind frame that it's set part, it's set for the Jews, that this is their thing. No, there's certain things of it that they do. Uh, that is no longer in need, like the we talked about the sin offering, how the Lord has already fulfilled those. We don't need to do the sin offerings. There's things that they do uh, with the branches and certain things that they do a certain way. I don't do those things here in my own home. I set a table out in the presence for my Lord, and I put praise and worship music on. I put the tent outside. I'll put some palm branches out there. I'll put some greenery out there. I don't get religious about it. I make some food. I do things that are gonna be exciting for my children, for my family, because I'm setting a new presence. I'm setting a new tradition in our house. So I want it to be exciting. I don't want it to be a strain on the people. I want them to come in when they can. Um, I don't get strict about dinner times. I just say, come out when you can. Come have dessert out with me then. Um, come outside and meet me for dessert. Let the praise and worship play stand just be out there in the presence of the lord and wait for your family to come to you wait for how god moves for your family in this time of tabernacles we have a few more days left of it and then we're going to go into the eighth day on saturday and we're going to talk about that in our next study so make room for the lord so let's get back into our scripture uh, you, you say, hey, wait, you just said that we're going to have to do tabernacles? Yes, let's jump into it. 
go to Zechariah 14 and 4. So if you go into Zechariah 14, it talks about the day of the Lord. This is when he comes back his second time. Let's go to four. Let's go to our number of foundation. And in that day, his feet will stand on the Mount of Olives, which faces Jerusalem on the east. And the Mount of Olives shall split into two from east to west, making a very large valley. 16, it says, and it shall come to pass that everyone who was left in all the nations which came against Jerusalem shall go up from year to year to worship the king, the Lord of hosts, and to keep the feast of tabernacles. And it shall be that whichever of the families of the earth do not come up to Jerusalem to worship the king, the Lord of hosts, on them there will be no rain. If the family of Egypt will not come up and enter in, they shall have no rain. They shall receive the plague with which the Lord strikes the nations who do not come up to keep the Feast of Tabernacles. This shall be a punishment of Egypt and the punishment of the nations that do not come up and keep the Feast of Tabernacles. They will have to come and worship. They will have to come for the Feast of of tabernacles and the feast of tabernacles is something that we're going to do in the new jerusalem we are going to continue to do you're going to sit at the table with your father all will be gathered at the table it's an in gathering of the people and we will be in awe of him and we will worship him and it'll be a time of eating and good food the best food and you will do that when it is that time in the new jerusalem so as Christians, should you be a part of this Feast of Tabernacles? Yes, absolutely you should. Absolutely you should set a table before the Lord and know that this is an ordinance of the Lord and that you're going to be doing it, whether Jew or Gentile, in the years to come. You're going to be a part of it. So now is the time for us to learn how to gather at the table, for us to learn how to set the table for the Lord to make space for the Lord to put worship at the table and to eat with your loved ones and show the love of God with no burden. You don't want to make this a stressful time. You don't want to make this a no one's helping me cook. No one's helping me clean. No, this is a joyful time and you do it unto the Lord and it's sweatless. It's something that's gracefully done. We want to be graceful people in this time when we make these celebration times. We don't want to be sweating, bickering, murmuring in the kitchen. We've got to break those things off of us, you know, that we think that everyone should be helping and doing things. And yes, it's nice that everyone can come and help and do things. But if you're going to be the man of the house or the woman of the house, that's going to start putting together this new thing for your home. It might just have to be you for a minute to put it together, but stand firm. All you have to do is stand and continue. All you have to do is be available and make the space. This is a time of making space. You know, these are these times where it's rehearsal, where we are learning. We don't want to learn what a shofar sounds like when we're in the heavens with the Lord. We want to hear the shofar when we're on earth and know the call of our Lord. We don't want to wait and learn all these later. It's not just for the Jewish people. He's close to the Jewish people. They were his people. Now it is greater. Now his people are the Gentiles as well. We are coming under the blood of Jesus. We are all of his children. Things have changed. We cannot get religious. We cannot get religious in his birthday being in December when it's sad because half of us know that it's not, that it wasn't, and we still just like, let's just come together. It's nice to have unity. Yeah, I get all that. But that is the time where the Lord was conceived. This is the time where the lights came down. They have that time of the lights of festivals, of the festival of lights, and they will celebrate the light of the menorah. And now that is the light of the Holy Spirit. That is the light of our Lord. That is the light of our God. That is the light that he has placed into the belly of Mary and that she was conceived in those times of lights, which would be six months away from the time of John the Baptist, the preparer of the way. John the Baptist must come first. He is the preparer of the way. 
He, the preparer must come before the bread. So when you see that his birthday falls in this time, where is preparation of the bread? I mean, who does that? Who can do that but the Lord? Can put John the Baptist's birthday to be in the time of preparation of the bread. And he is the preparer of the way for the Lord. He is the one crying out from the wilderness. It's in our Old Testament. It's hard for me to believe is when I'm reading in Zechariah 9, 9, and he's talking about how the Savior is going to come in on a donkey, on a donkey's colt. And, you know, I was thinking, I'm like, well, I remember when I went to Israel, yeah, there was still like donkeys and stuff around. Um, and there was like a lot of tour guides and you can give them a couple bucks and go ride a donkey, go ride a camel. I mean, they're still out there. There is still some that is still a way of life for many people. Um, but it's not as common like it was back in the day. And um, now, so, I mean, the people still believe that Messiah is going to come for the first time, but he has to be a baby that he has to come in on this donkey. And I just kind of feel like, you know, wouldn't you think that that time would have been then when this was the thing, that this was the transportation, and this is commonly used things. And then when we see Herod himself saying, I, I heard the star is out. I heard the star is there. Go and find out what's going on because Messiah has came. Jesus has came and the star has been shown and go find where he is. And he was under distress and scripture says, and so was all all of the nation you see it's a little area but that one nation will stir up the whole world because of the power that comes from within it because our lord will be planted will be seated there that he will be born in the same place that the lambs that the sheeps will be born for the tabernacle for the temples first and second that he was born in the same place and at the same time, their sheep being born around this same time in the land from the same time that Jesus came from Bethlehem and he came in the same season where the sheep were being born, where the lambs were being born to be held for the tabernacle, for the temple. And now our Christ has come as the living temple and he tabernacles amongst us on the day of tabernacle. He comes down being born on the day of tabernacle to tabernacle amongst us. And, and I mean, it's just, there's so much things that the Lord has done. And that puts us six months away from John the Baptist's birth, being in that time of Passover, being in that time of preparation, preparation of the bread. Just amazing how the Lord has structured his foundation. So I want to go into a part of the New Testament. I don't want to go too much into it, but I'm going to go to Matthew 2. Because this is historical, this was when Herod was afraid. Uh, this was noted in history. So we want to go ahead and we want to go through and look through this. And it says, now after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king, behold, the wise men from the east came to Jerusalem saying, where is he who has been born the king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and have come to worship him. Then Herod, the king, heard this. He was troubled and all Jerusalem with him. And when he had gathered all of the chiefs, priests, and scribes of the people together, he inquired of them where Christ was to be born. So they said to him, in Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophet, but you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judea, are not the least among the rulers of Judah, for out of you shall come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod, when he had secretly called the wise men, determined from them, that the time of the star has appeared and he sent to them and he sent them to Bethlehem and said, go and search carefully. He was worried. There's baby boys that were killed. The time of the Miss Messiah, Matthew 2, 2. 
Herod scene. There was a shaking. There was a quaking. Everything ceased. Nations distraught. The king of kings was here. The stars were in the sky. The Bible says that the stars have been set in the sky as signs. And they are sent as signs to the Jewish people. They should take heed. They should know that the Messiah has came. That he came on that donkey a long time ago. That it was set for him. That he came in on it on the day of the lamb selection to be the last and final lamb offering. He has come. He is coming again for the second time. There shall come forth a rod from the stem of Jesse. A branch shall grow out of his roots. The spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. The spirit of wisdom and of understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and of fear of the Lord. The cow and the bear shall graze. Their young ones shall lie together. And the lion shall eat straw like the ox. The nursing child shall play by the cobra's hole. And the winged child shall put his hand in the viper's den. And they shall not hurt nor destroy in all of my holy mountain. For the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. It shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall set his hand again the second time to recover the remnant of his people who are left. This is the second coming of the Lord. I will set up a banner for the nations and will assemble the outcasts of Israel and gather together the disperse of Judah from the four corners of the earth. All of those who has missed the Messiah's first coming will be gathered, will go to that time of tabernacles with the seven day cycle being the seven days, Messiah being born in the month of Teshuri, his birthday being that first day of tabernacles it's such a nice theory. I don't want to always call it 100%. I always keep it as a theory. But what is this eighth day of mystery? What is this eighth day that's been added on to the time of tabernacles? We're going to talk about that in our next study. Because that eighth day is the day of circumcision for our Savior. So he would have had those seven days. He would have been born. He would have been came down, dwelled amongst as the tabernacle, the living tabernacle. He is the living bread. He is the living water. And during this time of tabernacle, they do the water libration services where they pour the water down and they would do it at the temple. They would do it at the altar. And now there is not an altar. There is not a temple because it's now in Jesus. He is the living tabernacle. He is the living water he flows the living water through him he stood in the festival time and said i am the living water he stood under the light of the menorah he stood at festival and he said i am the living water whoever comes to me and drinks will not thirst this is the time that we're in this is the season we're, that we're in we just came from the month of el yule where the king was in the field where you can come to the king dressed any way, out of ordinance. You don't have to come any special way. You can go and see the king, anyone, everyone. You don't have to be dressed like you're going into the palace. He was out in the field. He was there for the workers. He was there for the blue collar. He was there for them all to come and see him. And now he says, build a tabernacle in your land, in your home, and I will come to you now. Now I'm coming to you. So as you build, as you go outside, as you put a table out for the Lord, in these last few days that we have left, you will see the Lord come. You will also feel everything from your family, saying you're not Jewish and all this other great stuff, stuff will happen. We will try to just deter you from reverence to the Lord. And no, it is just about reverence to the Lord. Go put the table out, set the place, put on the praise and worship music, make some good food, 
start making a place for the Lord on his appointed times because he will show up. Don't miss any more time of the Lord where his time is appointed. He's doing something special in these times. Get used to the flow of the Lord. Get used to it now so you know when we're in that heavenly place, when we're there in eternity, we will already know. We will already have the practice of this. We won't come in green. You don't want to be the green horn. You don't want to come in green. Have some experience under your belt. Know how to come to the Lord and set a table and set a place before him in his presence. We're going to stop right there for today. Remember to dive deep into the things of God, and we look forward to seeing you next time.